This is the melting snowball question, a differentiation question. A spherical snowball is melting at a rate proportional to its surface area. That is, the rate at which the volume is decreasing at any instant is proportional to the surface area at that instant. And we want to prove the radius of the snowball is increasing at a constant rate. Now, decreasing at the constant rate means that its rate of change, and there is d or dt, the rate of change, its radius, is equal to a constant. That's what we want to prove. So let's just write that down. We're interested in d or dt. But what we're given is something different. We're told that the volume is decreasing, or is melting in a rate proportional to its surface area. Well, we're dealing with a spherical snowball, a sphere. So we'd look up the tables here, and we'd write down what the volume of the sphere is, because that will be related. And volume, we see, is 4 over 3 pi r cubed. So it's good to write that down. And we're interested in the surface area. Now the surface area of the sphere is 4 pi r squared. So these are related to it. Now we know it's melting at a rate proportional to its volume. Now with this, when it says the surface area is proportional, and the volume is proportional to the surface area, what does this mean? Well, in maths, the word proportional has a specific meaning. If two things are proportional, it means that one is a multiple of the other. What we mean by that is dv dt, the rate of change of volume, is a multiple of the surface area. That's what proportional means. So we'll call that multiple the letter k. dv dt is k times the surface area. We know that k is a negative constant because it's melting or the volume is decreasing. Okay, now we have a problem. We want to find dv dt. But we don't have the volume in terms of time. We have the volume in terms of r. v is equal to 4 over 3 pi r cubed. But dv dt is equal to dv dr, which is something we can get, because we can differentiate the volume in terms of r by dr dt. Now, why this is true is because we see when we multiply this, we're multiplying um, by and dividing by dr. So that's effectively 1, so it is the same thing as dv dt. Now this is no longer on the course, this is something, something called parametric differentiation, but it's the only straightforward way of doing this question, apart from using something called implicit differentiation, which is also no longer on the course. So I'm going to write down this statement that dv dr multiplied by dr dt is equal to k times a. That's another way of writing what we were given first. Now dv dr is something we can work out, because we're just differentiating the formula for volume and we just multiply by the power of 3 and reduce the power of r to 2. So dv dr, the rate of change of volume, is 4 pi r squared. Now remember we want dr dt, that's the question. So I'm going to label um, some of the stuff we have. I'm going to call this equation 1 and equation 2. Now if I put the value from 2 into 1, so I'm replacing dv dr with 4 pi r squared. This gives us 4 pi r squared multiplied by dr dt is equal to k times a, but a is given by the formula for area, which is 4 pi r squared. This is very nice because we have 4 pi r squared on, on both sides of the equation, so we'll divide both sides by 4 pi r squared. And this gives us the dr dt is equal to k. So we've proven what we set out to prove that the radius of the snowball is decreasing at a constant rate since k is a negative constant. Um, it's a very nice answer but it's just no longer on the course. Okay, in the second one let's remember now what we have left over from the first part of the question. We know that the r dt is equal to k where k is a negative constant. And this question asks if the snowball loses half its volume in an hour, how long will it take for it to melt completely? We might start off using the information we have to figure out look, do we have, if it melts completely, I suppose its radius disappears, what do we know about its radius? Well, if we use what we were given in the last thing, multiply both sides by 
dt gives us dr is equal to k dt. Integrate both sides gives us r is equal to kt plus the constant of integration. Now, what's this c in this? We'll, we'll have to consider initially what do we start off with. Initially, we know the time is zero. And we'll call the radius, whatever we start off with, we'll call it r zero, the initial radius, the radius when the time is zero. So this tells us that the radius at the start, r0, is equal to k times 0 is the time plus c. In other words, as you kind of expect, the, the constant is what we start off with initially. So c is equal to r0. So rewriting the equation, we have the radius is equal to kt plus r0. Now this is nice because this gives us the radius in terms of time where k is a constant and r0 is a constant, is whatever the radius starts off at. So now we have something we, in terms of r, in terms of time. Now let's consider the volume. What does it mean that the volume loses volume in an hour? Well, we're going to call v0, just to give a name, is its initial volume, whatever it starts off at. And we're going to consider the volume an hour later. We'll call this v1, the volume when the time is one hour an hour later. And what we know is that it loses half of volume in, its, in an hour. So V0 is twice as big as V1, or half V0 is equal to V1. That's what the information is telling us. And we know, consider the formula for volume, we know the volume is 4 pi r cubed. Now this is the volume in terms of r I really want the volume in terms of time. That's really what I want. Is there any way of replacing the R with in terms of time? And there is now because we know that we have an equation for R in terms of time. R is equal to kt plus R0. So replacing the R in the volume equation with this, this gives us a new formula for the volume in terms of time. And that's really what we want. So maybe just looking at this in an easier way in terms of the volume. So we're saying the initial volume and compared to the volume in an hour's time, one is twice as big as the other. So let's write down the initial volume. That's the volume when k is zero, when, the, when t is zero. And that is equal to two times the volume when t is equal to one. I'm putting in the time values into this time volume equation. Now this is reasonably nice. There's, there's things that will cancel out here if we divide both sides by 4 by pi, multiply both sides by 3. And we also, k0 is 0. So when you multiply anything by 0, it's 0. So this gives us that r0 cubed is equal to 2 times, uh, once k is just k, plus r0 to be cubed. Now I'd like to get the cubed root of both sides maybe to neaten this up. Okay, the cubed root of both sides, that gives us that r0 is equal to the cubed root of 2 by k plus r0. Now, I could write either k equals or r0 equals. I'm going to write what r0 equals. So I'm going to expand this and bring the r0 terms together. So r0 is equal to the cube root of 2 times k plus the cube root of 2 times r0. So r0 is equal to there's 1 minus the cube root of 2 and that's equal to cube root of 2 times k. So I'm just factorizing this. Then divide both sides by this 1 minus the cube root of 2. And this gives us r0 in terms of the constant k. Now this could be useful to us. I'm going to highlight this. Okay, where are we going with the question? Well, we want to know the time it takes for the volume to disappear. 
when the volume disappears, it means the radius has gone to zero. So we want t when the radius is zero. We call this t value, I'm going to just call it capital T, just to give it a name. So we'll call it capital T the time when the radius has disappeared. Now let's look, I have two key equations here. I'm going to label them equation one and equation two. So if I put capital T into equation one, and I know that the radius has disappeared, so that's r is equal to zero. So that gives me zero is equal to k capital T plus r zero. And if I rewrite this to separate, it tells me that T is equal to minus R0 divided by K. Now I'm very close to the answer at this stage. If I sub equation 2 into this for an R0 value, it just gives me everything in terms of K, a constant. So this tells me, so I'm just subbing in the value from uh, equation 2. t is equal to this divided by k. Now what's nice about this is I have k above and below in this fraction, so they cancel out. And now I have something, I just put this value into the calculator. So I have a number for t, and when I put it in the calculator, I get 4.847. And this is t in hours, because we dealt with zero and one hours. Now the question asks us to get this in terms of minutes. So again, just using the calculator, changes to minutes, this is 291 minutes. I suppose a comment on this question, this is a very difficult question. Um, but this is probably as easy as a solution as you could to it. I hope you find it useful. Thank you.